Professional soldiers know that high morale is crucial to efficient operations, so is specialized training and the best technical support available. But after almost 40 years of unrelenting government reductions in military budgets, the rust out of critical equipment was entrenched. Some old gear no longer worked, and new or replacement supplies were unavailable. Some Canadian soldiers tried to buy their own. What makes Canadian soldiers the greatest peacekeepers in the world is not because of the results sometimes of what we do, it's because we do the same job as everybody else with half the gear. I had a really good troop over there. They wanted to order stuff out of magazines and stuff like that, and I had to tell them, no, it's not Canadian issue, you know? And these guys wanted to bring their own, like, uh, combat vests over and stuff like that, and all these guys are getting told no. Like, the young soldiers know what's happening to them. Helmets. We were short of helmets, for heaven's sakes. We could buy helmets off the shelf tomorrow. But we don't do that because, naturally, we want to produce them in some member of Parliament's riding where the jobs and the profits go. We had flak jackets on that the Americans wore in Vietnam in the 60s. Now, that's okay if a grenade blows up 100 meters away. I fired at a flak jacket on the small arm ranges in Calgary, Alberta before I left. And those bullets just rip right through that jacket like nothing. And then I found out exactly what happens when you're wearing the jacket when you get shot. We shouldn't have been wearing those jackets. I was over in Bosnia and I saw kids over there. And we aren't talking about kids, we're talking about 18 to 25 year olds. They're who fight wars. And we're talking about our kids overseas in lousy equipment and not only driving lousy equipment, but wearing lousy equipment. And that doesn't make any sense. The carriers, or, or our wheeled vehicles, had no blast blankets. Like the bomb squad uses, you can put them on the bottom of your vehicle, so if you do hit a mine, which is highly likely if you go off the road, it's gonna take the, that shrapnel out instead of hitting you in the legs or, or the buttocks. Peacekeeping, which is what we're doing, has become more dangerous and is starting to look a lot like war. It falls heaviest on the army, which is the branch of the service which is least able to sustain it because it has not been given the type of equipment uh, that it may need to fulfill these roles. Shortly after I left, we sent in the Cougar, which is a six-wheel vehicle with a small 76 millimeter gun on it. I mean, I stood along with a number of other senior officers in front of our troops in, 19, in the late 70s and said, this is a training vehicle. Do not worry. This will never be deployed to an operational theater. I was told that by my leadership. The leadership was told that by the political leadership. It was bought for a training vehicle. So guys could pretend they're driving tanks in Wainwright and then have real tanks in a theater of war. What do we do? We're Canadians. We'll put those cougars in a theater of war, and maybe the guys will make believe it's a tank. You look like the ragtag outfit, eh? You don't have the gear. You look spit and polish. You look good. And the guy inside the uniform is excellent. I don't think there's a better heart in any soldier than a Canadian soldier. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, so many times you look like, you know, the poor kid on the block. You don't get the gear. You know, and you're up there in the big game. Now you're thinking, holy shit, I'm playing with the big boys and I'm in this piece of crap. And I'm wearing this and I got this and I'm, these, these are, this, 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 this is the no rules thing, you know? It's not 911 William Shatner, come give me a hand. No rules. This is, you're playing with the big boys now.